Hello, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to a new edition. This is the second edition of our GSMA Showcase live event. Thank you for taking the time and effort out of your busy schedule for joining us here today. I am very pleased to welcome representative from key ecosystem stakeholders. We are a global business, so great to see this reflect in the locations of our speakers too. I am joining from Buenos Aires, uh, Emmanuel and Wayne in London, Kathleen in the US, Truefone and HMD in Lisbon and Cologne respectively. For those who don't know me, I'm Nicholas Forster. I'm Outreach Director here in GSMA Services. And my primary role is to make sure our customers, our partners and members are leveraging the best of our full suite of services we have available to help the mobile industry as a whole. We have a great session today, which is focusing in Volta, the aim of which is help you, um, your team, your company, to plan more effectively, reduce cost, increase revenue, and improve your customer experience today in preparation for a 5G world tomorrow. Uh, it should provide you with an overview of the state of the market for Volta, what the current issues are with the with interoperability from both MNO and OEM perspective, an, over, an overview of the tests provided by the interoperability testing service, and we'll feature also customer perspective with Truefone talking about their experiences of getting their network on track. We have some great speakers today who are going to present to you and are going to talk around this topic. As a result, we have a consistent and packed agenda with each session lasting approximately around 10 and 15 minutes. Um, the first session would be from Emmanuel Colta from GSMA Intelligence, who is going to present a market update and share an overview of the Volta landscape. Then we will have Kathleen Leach, Senior MTS Technology Development and Strategy from T-Mobile, who is going to talk about identifying and addressing multi rollout issues. After the session, we will have the voice of Truefone with Gonzalo Nuna Pereira, telco engineer, who is going to share the recent GSMA Vault interoperability testing experience. Following with the agenda, we will have Wayne Cattler, interoperability director here at GSMA, who will talk about the GSMA interoperability testing, the different types of tests, and the program in general. Last but not least, we will have Reza Serfat, General Manager, Quality and Customer Compliance from HMD, who will give an OEM view on the interoperability testing service and IMS rollout challenges. At the end, we will have a Q&A session where we will try to address and answer as many questions as possible. And just to make you aware, we will that this session is recorder, recorded and we will be able to share all the content afterwards. So please, with that, I would like you to ask you, don't be shy, put all of your questions in the right hand chat and we will address them at the end. So for the next hour, try to resist the temptation, do listen, do get involved and do ask questions. With that, I would like to uh, uh, hand over directly to Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Nicolas, and welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Emmanuel Cota. I'm a senior analyst at GSMA Intelligence, and I cover mobile network infrastructure here. And in the next um, 10 minutes, I will give you a quick update based on our latest research and latest forecast. How do we see Volti um, and what can we expect until 2025? So in the next slide, please, um, we believe that we reached the new new phase of, of voice communication and and recently voice is not the most uh, hyped area of, of, of the industry, unlike mobile edge computing or network slicing, but this is a cornerstone of the offering of every mobile network. So this is something very essential and to understand the recent trends and understand how does the arrival of 5G is impacting the industry, it, 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 it is essential uh, for, for mobile operators. And 
we, we, we reached the phase where 5G is expected to be the network of the network. And while in the 4G times, you could simply fall back to, 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 to CS networks, to 2G and 3G exactly. Uh, but now the question came up that should operators operate 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G at the same time and, and running multi-generational networks? And how does it impact in VoLTE usage? So in the next slide, you can see a quick summary about the latest numbers of on, on VoLTE devices and networks. So straight into the point, we count 235 number of VoLTE uh, networks globally in 107 countries. And we expect there is more than 1,000 device manufacturers globally who actually produce VoLTE capable devices. And I'm not just talking about phones here, but also smartwatches, any other kind of variables, uh, modems, uh, even payment terminals, tablets. So there is a wide range of 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 wide range of devices which will uh, which actually so many new um, device manufacturers are producing these days. In the next slide, you can see um, a forecast and, and a current status of 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 VoLTE these days, and we expect that today there are roughly 4 billion VoLTE connections by the end of, there will be 4 billion VoLTE connections by the end of 2022. And since the first network was introduced in, in roughly around 2012, uh, you can see a, a stable increase, not an exponential increase, but there is a constant increase, and, and we expect that there will be more than 5 billion 5.2 billion VoLTE connections by the end of 2025. In the next slide, you can see a breakdown. Uh, uh, sorry, first the the connections and 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 VoLTE connection penetration globally, and, and you could see that this is basically a percentages of the total number of connections served by the cellular networks, and and how much of these is capable to for VoLTE. And, and you can see that this is roughly 47% uh, and we're going to reach 50% next year. So it's it's a stable increase and almost reaching 60% by the end of 2025. In, in the next slide, there is a, a regional focus into different markets. And, and you can see that uh, by the end of 2025, GSR Intelligence, we forecast that there will be more than 3.5 billion devices, VoLTE capable devices in 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 Asia. Uh, but what other part is interesting is the market potential and where do we don't have VoLTE capable devices. And and you can see that especially Sub-Saharan Africa with with seven percent, but also um, the Commonwealth of Independent States such as Russia and ex-Soviet countries uh, are roughly around 34 percent of of penetration, so there is still still a huge opportunity. Uh, North America and Europe is 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 basically almost saturated, but there are some regions in the globe where we still expect that there will be a significant amount of devices not capable for for quality. In the next slide, there will be a short summary that why are we still why didn't we still reach full uh, VoLTE capable device penetration in the end of uh, 2021 and, and, and in the beginning of 2022. And we identified three main prerequisites to have VoLTE to spread and, and, and reach higher penetration. And one of them is the terminal support. And uh, you could see that now there are more than 2,000 devices are VoLTE capable. But for example, Apple just uh, made VoLTE default in, in the beginning of 2019. So there are still lack uh, in, in, in terms of some device manufacturers still did not, uh, still just actually made VoLTE uh, standard uh, basic settings in, in some devices. You could see that one of the reasons was, was the lack of optimization in the beginning and operators in after they introduced the first um, innovators, operators who actually, innovative operators who introduce VoLTE very quickly, uh, they could actually face a lot of complaint from the customers 
for for quality. So, uh, but after optimization and after gaining more spectrum, uh, the number of these complaints obviously decreased significantly. And later on, we will see that obviously the quality of quality is 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 way better than a regular CS call. And also coverage. And as 4G became a new base wireless network almost everywhere globally, um, and it became a mature technology, uh, this is something very important to see that globally we see that that 87% uh, of the population is actually covered with, with LTE. So um, this shouldn't be a bottleneck anymore. And as every other technology, it's following uh, an S curve, and and we could see that these three bottlenecks are uh, not that relevant as they used to be in the beginning. In the next slide, there is a quick summary about the main drivers of Volte these days. And as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, a lot of operators is shutting down their 2G or 3G networks globally. In in Europe, mainly they start with. With 3G, but in other parts of the world, they start with 2G shutdowns. And in case you shut down both 2G and 3G, you will have no other options to, to fall back. So, so having Volte is and migrate to Volte is, is it will probably become very important in the future later on. Um, voice quality is also a factor for 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 many of us, and fast call setup as well. Uh, it seems very marginal but but this is also uh, an important factor such as multimedia communications and new added extra functions which can which can help improve customer experience and even have operators to monetize new added services uh, such as video and 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 new other options which you can improve voice as well and last but not least efficiency so Volte car, Volte in general is way more energy and and spectrum efficient. Let's be clear that it's way more efficient than 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 other previous technologies. So basically, using these technologies, helping operators to not just save energy, but a spectrum became a scarce resource. And it, if we expect that data traffic will improve uh, continuing with 30% every year. Uh, this will be also a factor to to be careful uh, and and make sure that you optimize how you um, use your spectrum. And we expect that these five drivers will continue um, this this adoption of of Volte with with relatively the same path and with different regions. Obviously, they continue to say different regional differences. But we expect that uh, World TV will reach this 5.2 billion number of connections by the end of 2025. And in the next slide, I think there is just a quick summary about GSMA intelligence. And we are the analyst and consulting arm for, for GSMA and doing a lot of custom research for, for external clients and also a lot of syndicated reports in, in a various kind of topics. And we are very proud of the the data forecasting team and and they're not there actually, but but we are using their data very often and and you could see these data points there in the presentations. So um, uh, thank you very much for your time and and I hope it was useful for you. Uh, I was Emmanuel Cote and and please let me know if you have questions in the end and and you can reach me there or, or ask your questions in in the end of the of of, of the presentations in the Q and A session. And I would like to give the stage for Kathleen from Team T-Mobile US. And, and thanks again for your time. Uh, Manuel, uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening for um, everyone joining us today. So thank you. Um, I've noticed there's a, been a couple of questions around 
um, on the chat. And if you bear with me, I think I'll probably answer the majority of them through my presentation. So I'm here to talk to you about getting Volte right, right, not just defining the issues, but actually what we did to address the issues. Um, again, my name is Kathleen Leach. I'm from T-Mobile US. Uh, I do a lot of work within the GSMA. Uh, one of my roles um, beyond working um, with a network group and and uh, the billing and charging group was uh, as the wholesale agreements and solutions chair. So WAS, we call it. Um, and you'll hear me refer to that later. So next slide, please. OK, so uh, uh, just covering what we are going to walk through today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the background, how we define the issues, and then how we address them. Uh, and um, the, the last slide is a lot of uh, resources and solutions for you. So if you go to the next slide, please. Could you go to the next slide, please? Ah. There, great, excellent, thank you. Um, I, and I think my screen refresh is a little slow. So so when I say we, I think about the, the ag agreements and uh, solutions group within the GSMA. So we started really looking deeply at Volte and Volte roaming um, uh, in and around maybe 2017, 2018. Uh, by the end of the year in 2019, we had amassed a significant number of issues through operator interviews, uh, operator experience, lessons learned, et cetera. Uh, so we had this group of issues. And uh, at the same time, we had this convergence of circuit switch network closures. Uh, Emmanuel noted the primary reasons for, for this already in his presentation. So um, uh, one of the other things we wanted to do is identify the impact of those network closures on our roaming customers. So that you could understand what uh, this this tip of the iceberg that's coming. Uh, we're going to have coverage changes, um, potentially and, and probably congestion with less spectrum available, fewer networks. We all understand that we have security issues in some of our legacy technology, particularly with 2G, is right for frosters. And and one of the lessons, if you're last in line, the chances of you getting resource availability and and any kind of prioritization on your own partners um, testing uh, timeline is is pretty slim to none. Um, I'm going to start with a few fun facts that are answer a couple of our questions. So the first commercial Volte launch was in 2012. Now keep that number in mind, one in 2012. So by the end of 2021, the majority of operators have launched LTE, right? There are very few no LTE spots around the, the globe. Today, we have 235 operators that have launched Volte. So, wow, only 235 in 10 years. That's kind of crazy. Um, then let's talk about Volte roaming. The current estimates are less than 70 operators have launched Volte roaming. So that's really scary when you think of the numbers and you look at the number of operators that are shutting down their uh, circuit switch networks and, and going full Volte. So I would say that this is truly just the tip of the iceberg um, across um, operator space and, and different regions. So next slide, please. Okay, so I mentioned all the issues that we had collected. Um, in those, uh, we we tried to categorize them and define them into the commercial, regulatory, and technical. So the WAS group brought all these issues. So clearly, they can identify and address the commercial issues, whether it's confusion around charging models, uh, needing more commercial guidance, needing to understand how you translate, or not te technically, but literally, how you translate a circuit switch voice call to what it, uh, what the resource utilization and a Volte call. And certainly we have a loss of that traditional revenue um, and an adjustment that needs to be made. The other two issues, the regulatory and technical issues, we'll talk a little bit more about them in the next slide, but they're, they're not areas that really we could address at the commercial um, uh, level and the business side because they really were more on the technical um, uh, regulations um, and how you implement them and then clearly technical. So we brought this um, all this information into a, a special Volte uh, network 
um, shutdown workshop uh, at the beginning of 2020. So face to face, it was awesome, uh, January 2020. Uh, we divided the issues within the network group into six primary work streams that we'll talk about. And as well, we made a decision there that uh, we document um, both the technical and the device impacts on circuit switch network shutdown and what you needed to do. So the, the work started to resolve and document the solutions. So next slide, please. Okay, so here are the six work streams that we addressed with um, all of the issues that were brought. And this was addressed within the network group, working with the terminal group, um, et cetera. So first off, general Volte issues. Well, you know, circuit switched um, voice is locally broken out. Multi, we had big questions around, are we going to get a local breakout and do a, a, a network interface? Or are we going to have it home routed? Well, so home routed one, it's kind of like the Kleenex of tissue. Um, so uh, this group uh, covered the Volte issues um, that were impacted by this new way of delivering voice through a home routed, the SHR home routed interface really primarily clarifying what was already defined in 3GPP and also addressing the feedback we got from MNOs. We had this big database full of called Virtue, a group task force, um, uh, all of the issues that were um, uncovered um, as well that were addressed, but then we had all these other issues that operators needed to deal with. So everything from IMS registration to dealing with uh, um, local geolocal numbers, IP compatibility and um, uh, really service continuity across Volte and, and uh, circuit switch. The second work stream is uh, no surprise, emergency call. Uh, while we had defined three uh, home S8 home routed, the home routed Volte um, for uh, for this technology, um, we had some work to do in the standards around how we would deliver IMS emergency call. In the meantime, this group also documented the um, how you handle both uh, circuit switch and packet switch options around emergency call. SMS was the third work stream, and it really described the the applicable uh, IMS uh, configuration parameters and how they're set uh, and understanding um, the, the requirement for SMS over IP, uh, this IMS registration that, that, that can be independent um, from the voice, from the uh, Volte. The fourth area was uh, regulatory requirement implementation. And certainly uh, we at T-Mobile have been encountered um, some confusion around the, the regulatory requirement. Now the difference here um, that, that is really important to understand is in circuit switch, the visited network is delivering the service. It's also um, able to control and manage and, and deal with the, the unique regulatory environment they have where that service is delivered. And that is the key point. Where is the service delivered? Where the service is delivered is what drives who wins on the, requ the regulatory requirement. So when you are delivering, when you are um, hosting Volte from the home network uh, into a visited network, it's the visited network's lawful intercept regulation that applies along with data retention. So um, we, we uh, documented that well. The big area that really caused the, the uh, caused and is causing probably the most angst is around testing and handset challenges. Well, certainly this whole webinar is really about addressing these issues and we'll hear much more about testing and, and how that's been addressed through the rest of the hour. But it covers the testing considerations and the, the goal was to remove or reduce any of the bottlenecks associated with Volte and home routed deployments. The last one is where we uh, keep and exchange our technical information. Uh, this is the, the Rayx database. So we streamlined that, took out the local breakout option and tried to mandate key Volte um, information. So uh, last slide, please, or next slide, I should say. Okay, so now we're at addressing the issues. This work all occurred over the course of uh, 2020. Um, and what um, what we ended up with were a lot of guidance, a lot more documentation, a lot more resources for operators. Certainly the culmination of 
um, the the technical work streams and the um, uh, the commercial work is this multi implementation guide. It's available on the IC2. The next slide, I have a link. Um, the key uh, testing uh, it areas: the streamlined voltage testing and IR25, the GSMA network settings, the device type requirements, a new PRD. Uh, and, and overall testing support, all of these different initiatives all have an objective to minimize or reduce the problems that, that, that we're facing um, in trying to test Volte with our roaming partners. There are a few other resources on there, updated closure guidelines, updated uh, uh, technical guidelines on uh, circuits 2G, 3G sunset. Um, we have operator lessons learned, and we also keep a monthly tracker of network closures and Volte launches. So last slide, please. Could you move to the last slide, please? Okay, well, uh, that's actually all I needed to share with you today, um, which uh, I appreciate your your uh, attention on this. Um, again, I have that link for those GSMA members that will take you to all of those resources that I just highlighted on the previous slide. Um, and I think at this time, I'd like to hand over to one, uh, Goncalo, oh, excuse me, Gonzalo, um, so that okay. he can uh, talk to you. And he's from Truphone, and he'll give you an operator experience. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Kathleen. And thanks for the insightful presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Gonzalo Pereira. Uh, I'm a network architect at Truphone, and I was responsible for driving the, the GSMA voting interoperability testing here at Truphone. Uh, we managed to be the first global MVNO to pass the GSMA interoperability testing for Volte roaming. So I'm very glad to join this opportunity to share the reasons why we engage in this initiative and talk about our experience in performing these tests and the expected outcomes for us. Next slide, please. So I'll, I will start by a brief introduction about your phone. Uh, so we are a global company registered in, U in UK in 2006. We have 16 offices across the world and over 500 employees. Um, Trufon was founded with a mission to engineer smarter and more seamless connections between things, people and business around the globe. Uh, and apart from being a global connectivity provider, we are also a software house. Uh, we, have, we have developed a patented multi-number and multi emz technology that allows us to offer global connectivity plans and the local experience to our customers across several countries. Um, we also plugged in a patented in-network uh, voice and SMS recording solution that is seamless, simple and secure. And we are market leaders for the compliance mobile recording in the banking sector. And, uh, and for the last four years, we have been a strong company focus on the eSIM and we have developed an entire eSIM ecosystem to fully digitalize cellular connectivity. Uh, with our technology, and we are happy. We are helping uh, ship manufacturers, device vendors, and other operators to embrace this. Thing. Next slide, please. So we have designed our network for international business. Uh, we have built a truly global and distributed mobile and data network across four continents. We are a full MVNO with nine M MVNO agreements with top tier MNOs across UK, Germany, France, Spain, Poland, Netherlands, Australia, Hong Kong, and in the, in the US, plus around 280 global roaming agreements. Um, we already support Volte roaming live in five countries, uh, namely Germany, Netherlands, Portugal, Hong Kong, and US. And of course, our idea is to continue to expand our Volte coverage. Next slide, please. So let me talk about the reasons why we undertook this GSMA Volte Interoperability Testing Service from GSMA. So Trifon has a long-standing partnership with Apple. We started offering Volte on iPhones back in June last year. Although we don't actively sell Android devices to our customers, and therefore we struggle to get the OEMs engaged for the Volte testing. Next. So what are the three biggest challenges for us right now. Uh, the first one 
is that we see that the open market devices are disabling their voting capabilities when we insert our SIM, simply because they, uh, it, it has not been tested against our network. And such blocking is carried out by the OEMs to prevent uh, a bad user experience when connecting to an, an untested network. Uh, the second challenge we face in some countries is having our partners announcing the shutdown of their 3G and 2G networks to reform the spectrum for their 5G rollouts, uh, meaning that the CS fallback is no longer an option for the voice. Um, and the third challenge is basically driving our customers' expectations as Volta is becoming mandatory for them. Um, next. So our goals when we onboarded in this initiative were to have Volte unblocked on the open market devices, to work with the OEMs that still may require some additional testing after the certification, and see how we can speed up Volte testing on their devices, and ultimately to be able to offer Volte to our customers using Android devices. Next slide, please. So this slide summarizes what we have done when conducting this Volte interoperability testing service. So we started this journey on October last year by starting testing in the Netherlands, Germany, and US. And afterwards, we have made the testing for Hong Kong and Portugal. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have used our Dutch IMZ, uh, roaming in KPN network. In Germany, we have used our German IMZ, roaming in Vodafone network. In the US, we have used our US IMZ in T-Mobile network. In Hong Kong, we have used our Hong Kong IMZ roaming in HKT network. And finally, in Portugal, we have used our UK IMZ roaming in NOSH network. For all these five countries, we have successfully demonstrated the capability laid out in GSMI PRD IR25 test cases, including multi registration, multi mobile originated and terminated calls, multi calls with local numbers, call forwarding. SMS over IP, mobile originated and terminated, and emergency calls. Next slide, please. So what, what does it take? Uh, so for this process, I must say that Mobilian is the entity responsible for performing these tests. So first of all, we have to provision the test sims and ship them to Mobilian engineering team. Mobilian will then configure the sim details and add the physical sims into their sim multiplexer. We had to exchange network information with Mobilian for test setup in their platform. After the, this test setup, Mobilian will run the agreed test cases according to their availability and report back. And we have then to troubleshoot and repeat any failing tests if required. And after all the tests get passed, Mobilian will gather and share all the test evidences. And finally, GSMA issues a certificate and publishes the test results in their web page. Overall, I can say that we have a very positive engagement with GSMA and Mobilium. The tests have run very smoothly, also because our network was supporting Volta Live already since June last year, and we had already performed a lot of internal testing. Next slide, please. So what are our key takeaways? Uh, in terms of outcomes, GSMA is facilitating contacts with OEMs to understand what will be their policy for certified MNOs and what additional testing they may require. We are now engaged with Nokia and we will start testing their devices very soon. And we have seen an increase in downloads of our Volte settings in the GSMA network settings exchange. And of course, our expectations will be to expect to see this continue increased number of OEMs to download our settings. We expect also the OEMs to unblock the Volte for Trifon on their open market devices. And we also intend to extend our certification to further countries as we increase our Volte footprint in other countries. Next slide, please. So if you are an OEM, please reach out via devices at Trifon.com so that we can work together on enabling the Volte. And thanks for your time. Um, Coming up next is Wayne Cutler from GSMA Services. Thanks, Eva. Thanks, Gonzalo. Um, so I'm Wayne Cutler from the GSMA. I'm the um, technical director for interrupt testing. I'm going to talk about the testing and device compatibility. 
Um, next slide. So um, Kathleen talked about the streams of work within NG. Um, so in the testing stream on which this um, initiative is based, um, this slide shows the, the recommendations made by that um, in, in that work. So we, we have a test methodology which says that we want to test both networks and devices, both in isolation and in combination. Um, if in combination we split it up and we do network first and device second, we do non-roaming and roaming. And again, this would be non-roaming first, roaming second as a natural order of things. Um, to address the, the issue of how to test an open market device, uh, whereby that device can turn up in any network and there are um, typically some small differences between all the many uh, MNOs who've launched Volti, we designed um, six standard IMS-based configuration profiles designed to generically test um, the functionality, IMS functionality on the device. These are called service-based profiles, those services being voice, which includes video, SMS and emergency, and, um, and whether those um, services are provided via IMS or via legacy technology. And in each case, we have um, test suites to reflect those, um, where, where the services are provisioned, and that's reflected in IR25, which is one of the documents that Kathleen um, highlighted. We defined a bunch of network types um, as a shorthand um, for which services are on IMS, as you can see there. We assume a baseline of zero, and we assume everybody's heading towards type four, albeit at different speeds. Uh, we also have a roaming test matrix, so for the roaming case between two networks, we cover all combinations of network types and profiles. And finally, the, the work inside the NG group was endorsed by the Terminal Steering Group via TS-59, another document um, Kathleen highlighted. This document essentially says that an open market device um, recognises an IR25 compliant network and permits Volti on that network. Next slide. Yeah, so this shows the, the three test types available to MNOs or MVNOs. All testing is performed by um, Abilium. We do the testing on, on the GSMA's behalf, and Mobilium actually led the testing stream work in NG. Um, so from left to right, the, the network test um, tests a real network um, with a reference device or test equipment that looks like a reference device, acts as a reference device. Um, it's located in the network, you can see the run and it attaches just like a smartphone and it uses the IMS configuration settings of that network. The second test is the network roaming test. Configuration similar to the network test, apart from the fact we have two networks, we can have, we can have a, a probe at each end um, if doing both way testing. And we um, apply the appropriate configuration settings and network types at each end to reflect um, their, their, their selections. And finally, we have the uh, network and device combination test also available to an OEM. So in this case, we test a real device against an already tested network. And the way we do this is to, um, is to test against an emulation of the real network. The emulation is based on the network traces obtained during the network test phase. And again, we use the IMS configuration settings um, of, of the network. Next slide. So this slide shows some um, is about certificate issue and some promotion of results. So a big part of this um, initiative is to spread the word about successfully tested networks and devices. So on the left hand side, you can see example um, test certificate, which was given to uh, Trufon Portugal. The the middle part has a screenshot um, of the results page. Um, the, uh, the 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 characters in red they're actually hot links. If you click on them, then you open a PDF of this of the certificate for you to see. And finally, on the right hand side, we have um, an email example whereby by we spread the word and in and tell um, and inform OEMs that that uh, a network has passed the test and been accredited. Next slide. Um, yeah, so. We've heard about NSX, which is our database for um, sharing information. So MNOs can basically upload um, their parameter preferences, these parameters being in a document called TS32. Um, one of those parameter groups is the IMS set, which controls Volti. OEMs can then um, pull those correct IMS settings from the platform, thereby the device can be customized um, on SIM insertion. Um, also, we 
um, we use the NSX database to propagate um, um, notifications of successfully tested networks and um, a recent enhancement that we did to NSX. You can see in the screenshot at the bottom whereby for a given IMS setting, um, if that network's been tested successfully, then we give it a Volte badge. Therefore, on downloading those IMS settings, the UAM can see that it's an accredited network. Um, that's my last slide. Um, thanks for your attention. And I'm now handing you over to Reza at HMD to talk about the testing from OEM perspective. Thank you. Thanks, Rain. Thank you very much. And um, many thanks for having the opportunity here to present uh, the view of the OEM in this session. So my name is Reza Serafat. Perhaps you go to the next slide. Uh, so I, I'm doing Nokia phones uh, and Nokia branded phones since many years. Uh, if you could then go through the animation, sorry. Um, and the um, HMD is actually just for, for making sure that you know about us. HMD is a new startup that we uh, grown, founded in 2016. And we are the uh, exclusive uh, brand owner for Nokia brand to make the mobile devices, both feature phone and smartphone. And on the feature phone side, we are number one. And we have also many uh, 4G phones that uh, also Volta enabled. And we have also on top of that, uh, of course, um, smartphones and tablets growing fast uh, and also especially expanding in US and Europe and, and even in sub-Sahara, uh, we are going to, to, we are currently actually number two in, in South Africa as one example. Just to give you a kind of idea of where, where we are coming from, um, if you go to the next slide. So the, I wanted to actually, first of all, to give uh, from the OEM perspective, the challenges which we are facing every day. So as many of you potentially know, who are then somehow engaged with the chipset vendors, with the uh, system on chip vendors like Qualcomm, MediaTek, Unisoc and, and similars, they are, in order to, to reduce their cost, they are reducing their field force uh, significantly, means actually that all the pre-work that they have to do or they did in the past is now coming back to the OEMs and partially also going to, to the um, mobile network operators to make sure that at the end of the day, the, the modems and all the settings are going to work and are uh, compatible with the network. And the more we go in, in, in IP-based, uh, let's say, solution like 4G and 5G, the more complex is going to be the whole uh, setup, which makes actually the life much more difficult, if, especially if you want to have the testing in the countries to have uh, the Volta the really working properly, meaning actually in this case, you need to have uh, actually your own R&D staying and standalone, having the people in the field going and testing, and then having also in best case, uh, someone from the SOC vendors also there who could then actually make some tests, test software that you can make it. This triangle is actually quite complex to manage and takes several weeks, uh, actually up to four, uh, one month to get the, some, something really working and properly done and tested in the country so that we can really be sure we can go and, and enable the Voltaire and enable 4G for them and make sure that it's going to move on. Um, even uh, the, the other point is actually, even we receive the, uh, the corresponding uh, configuration from the MNOs and MVNOs, it doesn't mean that's going to work. So we have actually a quite good collaboration with many of the uh, mobile operators worldwide. They are giving us their staff and their uh, settings, their knowledge, nevertheless, they, we see that the diversity between the implementation of the uh, diff different, uh, let's say, chipset vendors is big. Uh, one configuration which is working in one chipset is not uh, certainly going to work for the other one. And also the other problem that we see is actually in many cases, even within that same uh, big family of the mobile operators, if you're looking to, to uh, mega operators who are more or less acting in many countries, even within the same network operator, different countries have a different uh, staff, which is then actually making, making the like uh, much more difficult. So this is actually the, the next point, which is making the um, user experience much more difficult. And that's about the uh, fact that we are going to have many other operators are going to, to switch off the 2G and the 3G. And for them, it is actually mission impossible uh, for the consumers at the end of the day, have a good coverage. In many countries, uh, for example, if they are switching the 3G off, the 2G coverage is not good, meaning if the voltage is not enabled there, 
the consumer potentially are going to lose the worst services, which of course is a, a big loss for them, a big challenge for them. So having said that, from this perspective, the complexities that we have, and also the whole interaction between the device and the back end in the new modern software um, architecture that we have, um, usually we're trying to use the, the software architecture in such a way that all the capabilities of the chipset is going to be used. If you have the octa-core, uh, quad-core, you want to have threads running in parallel to making the performance better. And then it's, it's enough that small timers, uh, let's say this assignment and, and uh, asynchronous working that all of a sudden the device is not working in the network, which in many cases, even in order to, to fix it, to understand that's going to be, we cannot even do it in the live network. We need really to go to labs and the lab environment to see what the root cause is and where it is coming from. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, so the, the point here is that we are actually quite late in form of the voter enrollment in many, many countries. And this 2G, 3G sunset is going to accelerate the work and, 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 and increase the pressure quite high. And we need to see how we're going to, to manage things in a form that at the end of the day, consumers who are relying on the network uh, side services and on the device services are not going to be disappointed and are still able to have the connectivity in a form that they need. And this is actually one of the key challenges that we have. The key challenge that I see is actually currently the fragmentation of the network in different countries and different um, MNOs and MVNOs is big. And uh, also fragmentation on the, on the uh, SOC vendors and the software architecture that they have is big. And if you are not able to have a better way to harmonize and standardize the interoperability testing between the different networks and devices, we will have a major challenge soon uh, being uh, staying in front of the or consumers and customers that we have and being asked why the service is now not having the right quality that they were looking for, they were used to have in 2G and 3G in the past. And here, um, I'm always saying that my dream is to be in a way that being uh, producing a device like a TV. As a TV manufacturer, the, the, these guys are not going to check the, the device, whether it's working against each channel provider and, and each uh, service provider, it, they just make sure that the, the device is according to the standard, is, is uh, having the standard features and having some standard platform for the testing, and that's it. And they know that they can sell the device and wherever it's going to be, it's going to work. But right now we are not yet there. And my point, my last item that I wanted here bring as a kind of new idea is, at the end of the day, we need a kind of joint forces from the OEM side and from the network side, talking with the uh, SOC vendors and the, the system on chip vendors and chipset vendors, that we should find a way together to define a kind of platform where we can then test all parts against that and being, being able to, to be sure that the, the things are going to work and at the end of the day, we don't have a problem. This initiative, the GSMA, I, that's also a reason I, I was really happy as I was informed from that. This initiative in, in GSMA is going exactly in the direction that I want to go, and I think it is going to be beneficial for all of us. Having said that, I'd like to uh, thank you again for, for the time and hand over back to the host. William, thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very insightful, amazing presentation. Thank you all the, the speakers for, for this. Uh, first, as I said, I would like to thank you all the audience for taking the time and effort to, uh, to join us here today out of your busy schedules. Please remind, we will share the video and the content online. And if there's any question that is not responded, we will address them afterwards via email. So with that, I would like to take this last minute for any question people might have. So for anyone that is still online, do you have any question? I saw some questions here in the chat, so I'm going to read uh, some of them. Just a minute. OK, this one is this one is for you, Kathleen. Uh, you're looking to switch off CS voice. What does this mean for inbound roamers whose own network hasn't migrated to 
Uh -huh. Okay, well, so it, it certainly, um, uh, we already heard all the drivers, it, it, but it does put us all in a, a bit of a difficult position, right? On one hand, we have a loss of service. Um, on the other hand, we have a loss of the traditional revenue. So um, at T-Mobile, one of the things that we're looking to do is, is really bridge that gap. Right, we're going to shut down our circuit switch networks. Um, we've announced already the the 3G. We have other operators in the in the U.S. that have already shut down. Um, for uh, so we want to bridge that gap for operators um, that until they can establish their Volte and Volte roaming. So what we've developed is more of a hosted Volte solution. We we call it our visited subscriber solution or VSS. So what that does is uh, inbound roamers whose home operator um, either has not launched Volte roaming or not even launched Volte yet, uh, it will certainly require the devices to be Volte capable and have Volte enabled on their device, but then we can host the Volte locally and deliver back to the home operator uh, uh, a tap file, a, a network file that is, um, you know, that, that recognizes the data as, as, um, as Volte, but charges as the, the traditional circuit switch method, right? We, we do that conversion for them uh, and uh, hopefully be able to support. So we'll, we'll be able to authenticate and get them on our network via Volte. Thank you, thank you. So Next question would be for Gonzalo from Truefone. Can you give some examples of what you had to fix or tweak on your networks to make them compliant with IR25? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I recall that we had to, to change uh, our roaming restrictions on HSS, uh, specifically in Portugal, uh, that were preventing the attachment for IMS services. Uh, this was due to the fact that we are not yet live at the moment of the testing. We're just uh, preparing for it. So we had to make that tweak on, on the HSS uh, for the test sims. Uh, besides that, uh, we had some minor challenges that we need to overcome during the tests. It was basically due to, to the, the sim configuration uh, by mobility to the, regarding, regarding our multi imsi capabilities. And we had to fix on our side some provisioning issues on the test sims. Um, but overall, I can say that uh, the, the, the tests have run very smoothly. And we actually didn't need to, to change the network configuration that we had already uh, uh, at, at the stage, I'd say. Because we were already live uh, when we performed these tests. So uh, the tests have really run very smoothly, to, to be honest. Yeah. This one is for Wayne, I think. Uh, I have already launched Volti. Is, is it still useful to perform the testing? Yeah, we think it is, because even if you have Volti, um, there still may be some um, glitches in the network that, that need to be ironed out. Um, and, and therefore, by, by having it independently ratified by, by a third party, as it were, um, that, that's a good step as a sanity check. And in addition, by, by having it accredited using the um, the channels we talked about, so the NSX badge, the, the mailing list, the IOP results page, and propagating the, the, um, the fact that network's accredited um, informs OEMs of that fact and um, gives the operator access to, to a greater number of devices. Great, and another one for you, Wayne. Since I migrated to Volti, I have sub subscribers that are not having a good customer experience due to some services being blocked. Is this going to solve that issue? Um, yes, so we're working towards that. So part of this is due to um, devices not trusting networks and not allowing Volti. Part of it um, might be due to um, incompatibility between devices and networks which of course um, in the general case could, could be caused by um, non-compliance at either end. Um, so therefore what we're trying to do is to break the problem down, have common, a common testing framework for both networks and devices um, using that IR25 set um, and um, sharing, um, sharing information about tested networks and basically um, spreading confidence throughout the industry um, to 
facilitate interoperability essentially and to address those problems and to lead to the un unblocking of devices and the um, the fixing of um, interoperability glitches where we have them. Great. Um, I think I have one more. <clears throat> what is the difference if I, as an MNO, go directly to the manufacturer? What is the added value for doing this testing with the GSMA? Um, I think it's probably twofold. One, one is that if I'm a smaller um, MNO, I may not be able to engage with certain OEMs um, because because obviously um, the bigger OEMs they they do engage with with the larger bigger MNOs do engage with the larger OEMs. Um, but if you're smaller, when you may you 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 kind of get put in the queue when you may you, you may stay near the back of the queue for a long time um, because your purchasing power you know isn't isn't strong enough to make you a priority in the in the in the larger OEMs eyes. Um, and in addition, it's, it's the it's the general one of if you if you test with a um, a neutral third party, um, then I guess there's more credibility to the testing, um, as well as all the stuff I've already mentioned about um, propagating um, the the information about that network being accredited, so that more OEMs find out about it, etc., and the MNO can get access to devices. Okay. Kathleen, the 70 bulky roamer, roaming operators you mentioned, are these all commercials or just testing pre-commercial? Yeah, so the statistic is actually an estimate um, and we estimate it less than 70. Uh, it's somewhere around the 60, 70 range, but these are these are commercial launch bulky roaming deployments. OK, great. So I think we have a last slide which shows the the upcoming session we will have. Next slide, please. OK, what's next? We will be having the next session uh, with regards related to how eSIMs play a key part in mobile dis digital uh, digitization. This is the showcase live number three. So we are reaching the end uh, of the of this event. Uh, just bear in mind that we will address all the questions afterwards by email. So with that, I would like to thank you. I hope you found this session of interest and valuable. As we said, uh, the GSMA Showcase live sessions are a series of webinars that we are doing to try to help you around the different solutions we provide here in GSMA services and related to the mobile industry part of the topics. So with that, thanks again. Have a great day and hopefully speak soon. Bye.